How do we face up to gratuitous resistance? How is everybody doing today? Welcome to my channel. And um, I am Thomas, and I do educational videos on a number of different subjects. Mainly these days I'll be covering uh, the tree of life. And I'll be rolling out 144 consecutive videos on uh, different aspects of the tree. Um, we're well into that right now. Uh, and we kind of just go through it by numbers. Today we're looking at number 65. And um, that question, how do we face up to gratuitous resistance? Before we get into that, we're going to go over a brief overview of the tree just to uh, refresh your memory or uh, introduce you to the topic and then at the end of the video we'll go through the hundred for one of the 144 different uh, aspects of the tree and uh, before before that we can um, if you do click the link in the description I'll send you a free copy of the uh, list of the 144 and it's just a guide to it so that uh, when you watch these videos, uh, you're kind of up to date and you have a uh, scorecard in front of you of which is which and what number is, is which and uh, all that uh, because it definitely can get confusing. Okay, now here is the Tree of Life. You may recognize this uh, or you may not, but it's a uh, basically... It, served, it goes way back to at least ancient Egypt, and it's probably used for several different purposes. Uh, for my purposes, I use it as basically a map of our uh, faculties of consciousness. So it's, it's a map that you use uh, as kind of like a meta um, consciousness. So you can... Um, it's, it's really like an uh, elaborate mnemonic device. So you can, um, one proponent of the tree called it a mystical filing cabinet. So basically you, you take in different kinds of information throughout the day, throughout your life, and um, all these different things that you take in um, have a place here on the tree. And you can kind of file them away there and it helps you to be able to recall them, to uh, remember them, and to put them into perspective. So that's why uh, we're focused on the tree as a as a fundamental, um, you know, uh, as a foundation for a lot of the other classes, a lot of the other subjects that I'll be covering later on. Okay, now you can see that the tree has got ten different circles or spheres. Number 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Then there is a zero, or I'm sorry, there is an abyss right here that is an applied sphere, and then there is a zero above the tree. So that's a total of 12 different categories. And again, that's what I've done with the more advanced version, is I've taken the 12 categories and I've applied them more broadly to each one of the 12 categories. So I've broken down the 10th into its 12 categories and broken down the 9th into its 12 categories and so on, which makes a total of 144. And that's what the guide is about that you can get for free if you click in the description. Okay, now for a little background on each one of the, uh, each one of the faculties, the 10th sphere is really our... Um, survival instinct. This is our uh, wild animal uh, faculty. This is our fight or flight response. This is the uh, involuntary functions of the body. Uh, has to, uh, the negative aspect of that is really like the lusts and the, um, and the defilements of the body that make it harder for us to stay alive. But uh, the, in the positive aspect, that's really like the life force, the thing that keeps us alive uh, with, without our conscious um, you know, input in the matter. Okay, then the ninth sphere uh, has to do, we open this up as we, as we grow up uh, you know, from the start. 
uh, where we're um, in the home, which is, would be called the domestic consciousness. And um, in the home, we're growing up the first few years of our lives and we are like a sponge. We're super receptive to everything going on, which is called mediumistic trance. This does have to do with like that trance state uh, where we're super receptive to uh, everything that's going on. And we, um, we, watch what, we watch intently what other people do, and then we imitate that. We try to, we try to replicate what they do, and we fail. And we try again, and we try again, and we try again. So it's, we, we imitate, and then we practice. We keep practicing it till we get the imitation right. And then we memorize it. So that's how the skills, that's how the behaviors get passed on, is through heightened receptivity, imitation, um, repetition, and then, or practice, and then um, memorization. Okay, uh, now where the night sphere is about the domestic consciousness, the A sphere is about the public. So when we go out into public, uh, we get uh, also um, stimulus. We get uh, you know different um, different things that we observe about life. Uh, but what this is is really it's the public, it's the institutions, it's the um, powers that be. It's the establishment, it's the expert opinion, it's the conventional wisdom, the paradigm, and it is all giving us, um, and I mean, this isn't really like a monolith. It's not just one thing, but it's, you know, different representatives, different areas of this A-sphere um, maybe give you different, slightly different perspectives, but more or less it's, it's kind of one, it, it's... It's uh, several different voices basically saying the same thing. And they give us our belief systems. They tell us what we're supposed to believe, and they um, enforce that. They make sure that we do believe it. And if we don't believe it, uh, they pretty much shun us. We're shunned out of the system. So we are forced to believe in the A-sphere to a certain extent. Um, and uh, in general, we're looking for what to be, uh, what to believe in. We're just starting in school. We're just starting to go to church, and we're we're still we still got that receptivity going on. And we want to be told what to believe, and we want to be told how to how to behave. But if we stay in this for a, a longer time, then we start recognizing that the, what they're telling us to believe and so on is it, it a lot of it is in contradiction to our own personal experience what we've experienced in life so there's a tension there um, which a lot of times is is mended through rationalization and so the rationalization is 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 a negative a sphere you know, where the A sphere is about our belief systems and our rational faculties, but the rationalization and other fallacies of reasoning are like the negative aspect of that, where we rationalize something by justifying um, justifying their beliefs uh, in favor of our own beliefs. Um, we tell ourselves that we must be going crazy, um, you know, that was a mirage, uh, or wh whatever it is that we tell ourselves, in order to justify this point, the status quo, because we recognize that we have to be accepted here to a certain extent. And, it, if, and for many people, they want to be accepted here completely. And that's the only thing they want. So they, they end up contorting themselves, bending over backwards in order to believe what is being presented here, regardless of whether it's true or not. It's important to remember that the A-sphere is a trickster. So what they're telling us is not necessarily the truth. 
It's what they want to tell you. It's they, what they want you to believe, regardless of whether it's true or not. Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Okay, now the seventh sphere is for people who actually do go through the logical reasoning process and kind of evolve out of this eighth sphere. And they move over to the seventh sphere, where the eighth sphere is about the real world. The seventh sphere is really about the imaginary world. So this is, the seventh sphere is for people who discern that there's a problem here. And... Um, that this is not really the truth and this is, this is uh, you know, making me as a person um, less of a person because I'm, I'm buying into a lie. And so a, a person who wants to be, you know, more free or more uh, true to themselves imagines a different world where things operate differently. And they also use other aspects of this um, seventh sphere to create alternatives to the eighth sphere. So they'll use their, uh, their intuition going inside and, and, and really asking themselves how they really feel deep inside. They use inspiration from uh, people that have come before them that have done similar things. They use their creativity and their... Um, pleasure principle, being able to put things together into new and pleasing arrangements. And they use all these things to create uh, alternatives to the A sphere, whether that is a piece of art or whether it's a song or whether it is an invention, um, something to, to uh, ameliorate some of the problems here at the A sphere. Okay, then we move up to the sixth sphere, this is uh, the central located point. This is where we are located. Uh, this is our free will faculty. It's our ability to pay attention and to make decisions. That's our free will. And um, unfortunately, our free will is being kind of usurped because we spend our time paying attention to the eighth, ninth, and tenth sphere, this matrix here of our comfort zone. This is where we are located. This is where we uh, grew up and we're comfortable with all this. You know, the, the, this is how we've, we've always known it to be. And so we pay attention to that because, you know, that's what we're comfortable with. But if we can use the other aspect of free will, which is our ability to make decisions, we can make the decision to avert our attention from this matrix here and to direct our attention onto the higher aspects of the tree. So that's the big move that we need to make there. And it's very difficult because it requires us to overcome fear because fear, we fear the unknown. And when we turn ourselves around here to pay attention to this area, to the upper uh, aspects, we're really looking into the unknown because this is not well developed, not like this is. This is like every day. We've gone through this every day for many, many years. This stuff, it, we maybe have a glimpse of some of this, but we it's largely unknown. So it's, it's um, you know, difficult, ter it's difficult t territory and it, it requires overcoming fear, at least facing our fears. Now, if we can direct our attention at the fifth sphere, we can start making progress because the fifth sphere is the next one, and this is our sense of justice. So our sense of justice, which is otherwise known as karma, our ability to, you know, uh, be just and to give justice to other people, which comes um, through, you know, understanding karma, being able to uh, karma is really calibrated based on uh, violence, violation, and waste. And so um, what happens here, karma is really, um, you know, as you sow, so shall you reap. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, what comes around goes around. So uh, you can think of there as being like a mirror here, and we act... And then we get immediate feedback on our actions. And so if we can use the, the, uh, the fifth sphere as kind of like an advisor or a teacher, we can act and then we get the feedback. So we know what is optimal and what is not optimal in terms of justice and in terms of karma. 
by paying attention to the feedback we get. So we can really uh, improve our, our justice you know, improve our sense of justice through paying attention to our karma. Similarly, we can pay attention to the fourth sphere, which is similar to the fifth, and the fifth is our the enforcement of the natural law. Karma is the enforcement of the natural way of the way things are, not like the law here, the judge or the cops, but the law of the natural law, how things really work, like the order of whether you want to call it God or nature or something else, but like the, the, the universal order. And that is the fourth sphere is where the universal order is articulated and enforced at the fifth sphere, articulated at the fourth sphere. The articulation is usually in the form of a cosmology, a holy book, a theory of everything or some such thing like that that had comes comes across uh, comes about over generations and civilizations of time uh, where people have observed uh, and systematically observed how things work and they've recorded these things um, and it's been you know deliberated over it's been uh, had to be have, have been amended many times to adjust to new findings and these so these are all kind of have st stood the test of time and have been um, corrected over time and so I feel like the best way the best approach though here is to you know try to take in as many different cosmologies as you can and then compare them contrast them and then use your intuition go inside and try to figure out you know what makes m the most sense to me well what harmonizes with my own experience um what what's in my heart what feels right so the intuition here at the four sphere it works um but only once you get to a certain level, you have to you have to elevate your uh, your understanding by studying different cosmologies. And then once you elevate your understanding, you have the ability to, to take it the rest of the way through your own um, intuition. OK, then the, the the abyss here is about our psychic powers, our abilities to tune into and recognize omens. In our, in our lives, omens being coincidences, anomalies, uh, uncanninesses, um, deja vus, and um, recurring names and numbers and themes, uh, just things that stick out in your mind as being very strange. Those are things that, that are like magnetic charges that we're supposed to be attracted to and that we're supposed to act upon them. So the psychic uh, powers here at the abyss are twofold. The first psychic power is our psychic receptivity, our ability to tune into and recognize those omens. And then the psychic heat is the other part, which is used to act upon the omen. And that, again, requires courage because we have to be able to put ourselves out there and to, to kind of like walk into the unknown by doing the action that is called for by the omen. And it usually call, calls for us to kind of put ourselves out there to make ourselves more vulnerable. Okay, now three, two, and one above the tree are our um, divine it's not above the tree, at the top of the tree, are our, our divine faculties within. Omnipotence, all-powerful. Omniscience, all-knowing. Omnipresent, all present, all at once, eternally. Uh, this also corresponds to like our um, culminated mission in life. Uh, this corresponds to wisdom, our ability to solve all our problems and uh, those of others, and really to avoid the problems from even arising in the first place. And then this is all about unity, unifying. We tap into this through sound and sound synchronization, mantra, sacred music, um, uh, shamanic rhythms. And then we tap into this through 
uh, deep, deep meditation, being able to calm our mind to the point where, um, you know, we normally think of, you know, uh, we normally think of intelligence as being our ability to think. Here, this is really our ability to not think. Okay, the wisdom is our ability to not think because thinking is always rational and it's always telling us, it's basically always telling us why we can't do something. So we need to block out that why we can't do something and tune into how we can do something because that's where the wisdom is. That's the ability to solve the problem. It's not in the, in the probable, it's in the improbable. And so we have to be able to sidestep or bypass our thinking, which is usually just giving us the probable. And when we calm our mind to a certain point, then we are able to sink into the depths of our mind, to the core of our being, our higher self. And that is really the first sphere. So at the second sphere, we're basically seeing an image of the first sphere. At the first sphere, we're being that thing at the, at the core. And when we do sink in and, and actually uh, be, become one with that core higher self at our center, um, we recognize that it's, we share that higher self with everything else. And so we're unified with everything else through that singularity at the center. Okay, then the zero sphere above the tree is a mystery, and it's a zero. It's not part of the universe, it's, uh, but it is part of the creator. So the creator has a separate life, or so to speak, um, and we are not privy to that. So this is a mystery. Okay, now that is the... That's the uh, introduction to the tree. Now, when we go to a, a slightly more advanced version, we go to the 144 fractal faculties. So that's breaking down each one of the spheres into its 12 component parts. And so today we're looking at number 65. How do we face up to gratuitous resistance? Now, where, where, we, where this is located is we find that number 65 is located in the fifth sphere. And it is actually the sixth fractal of the fifth sphere. So um, this is um, the fifth sphere is about our sense of justice, karma. It's also about subculture, uh, being able and nonviolent resistance, um, being able to uh, become just. And also, it's uh, where. The sixth sphere is about being able to stand in the face of fear. The fifth sphere is about being able to sustain that. So this is, in the Egyptian, this is called Heru of Two Horizons, or Hero of Two Horizons. This is Hero. Hero of Two Horizons refers to hero all day, all night, where, uh, you know, from sunup to sundown. Whereas the sixth sphere, the hero is just kind of like a one-shot deal, one event, you know, one occurrence, but this is like all day, all night. And then the sixth, so the sixth sphere aspect within this fifth sphere is what we're talking about. And this one, number 65, is called step into struggle. Whereas the opposite, which is number um, 50, um, number 54, uh, which is the, the fifth fractal of the sixth sphere, is called um, take the plunge. So at the sixth sphere, you're taking the plunge. You know, you're holding your nose and you're diving in or you're jumping in. Um, you have to kind of force yourself to, to jump in. Here, you're, you're pretty much used to it. So you just step in. You don't have to plunge in. You just step in. Step into struggle. Number 65 is about standing tall in the face of fear every day as our normal and necessary stance. Force ourselves when we need to. No time to celebrate, relax, or rest. This is not a crusade or a tirade, but we see 
the charade that is played to glorify the blade. We must use blades of nonviolence instead. Best used for cutting our attachments, for dropping, for kicking, and for cutting out habits, not to mutilate, to employ nonviolent weapons of mass creation. We revisit the law of the jungle, but now we know what we're getting into. We resolve to deal with impossible situations with enthusiasm, force ourselves when we need to, Heru of two horizons, around and around the clock. We're always on duty, even when asleep. At, at this stage, we must be self-insensitive and fearless, stepping out of the broom closet, dismissed and persecuted, the sound of laughter follows us around, but we know they are really laughing at themselves for how far short they fall to the standards we uphold, the standards we maintain. Because of constancy and long-term sustainability, others can now see that we are not going through a phase. We are and have been occupying this position, which makes us a threat to them. Magic Initiate. It's not even close enough for there to be a competition. Still, to stay in control, they will intensify the censoring, the smearing, and the punishing. They're quite afraid we're not afraid. They can't stand to see us turn our physique on their critique, made to make us fall, uh, made to make us follow their technique. Our sustained stance gives us a locus where we can cultivate consistently and clandestinely with Confederate comrades and sow seeds stealthily, sow seeds surreptitiously, and sow seeds steadily with our sovereign sisters and sidekicks. But if not, ultimately subculture needs only one. So be ready to act alone if necessary. Gain inspiration through studying and honoring the elders, the masters, while still avoiding idolizing or blindly emulating them. Two Horizons. Alrighty, that is uh, number 65, the sixth fractal of the fifth sphere called Step Into Struggle. Thank you for sticking around to the end and um, make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next installment of the 144 fractal faculties. And uh, you can click the like button um, you can share the video with others and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click the link in the description to get that free copy of the guide to the 144 Fractal Faculties. And you can also donate directly to me if you're so inclined through Cash App or Venmo. Uh, meanwhile, have a beautiful day and we'll see you tomorrow.